What are the hottest productions in the Chinese movie and TV market recently? One is the Korean TV drama series The Squid Game, and the other is a movie called The Battle at Lake Chongjin. These two pieces are completely opposite. One spreads quickly as a pirate in China, while the other is widely promoted as a theme or propaganda movie of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. Let's have a look at how Squid Game is doing in China. Netflix hasn't yet entered the Chinese market, but Squid Game, a Netflix Korean original series, has already created a frenzy in China. On October 6th, at the South Korean National Assembly, the South Korean ambassador to China said that more than 60 websites in China are currently illegally distributing the Squid Game. <laughs> The show is about a story of hundreds of people struggling to make ends meet and participating in six games on life to win a jackpot of about 38 million US dollars. As of October 17th, the topic Why is the Squid Game so hot had accumulated 2.06 billion views on China's social media platform Weibo. Many Chinese people have uploaded video clips emulating the games played in the drama. At the same time, a new business opportunity has emerged in China. The masks, costumes, food, and other related products featured in the show have been mass-produced in China and are being sold on Chinese e-commerce sites such as Taobao. In addition, Squid Game has been registered as a trademark by several companies in China, including clothing, shoes, and hats, education, entertainment, and food. The online status of the trademarks indicates that applications have been filed. I watched this TV show and I thought it was so interesting. I really like it. Also, this part of the show, the biscuit making, left a deep impression on me. After all, I mean the sweet snack and dessert business. But unlike many other stores selling sweet snacks and desserts, in our store, customers can make the desserts or cakes themselves. I think this show will provide a boost across a number of sectors. Our customers are mainly young people, and young people make up many of this show's fans. So I think if people wish to have a go themselves, then we can let them to do that in our store. And I think if they take part in this challenge, then you will become very, very popular.就会在想这个游戏有没有就看起来的那么难然后就是会不会很容易就碎掉或者是坏掉然后也会有点紧张觉得坏掉马上就要死掉这个是这个这个就是近期一个热点吧然后就我们也是因为这个所以才过来的像
Moreover, he promised not to join the U.S.-led missile defense system and not to accept the trilateral military alliance between the U.S., South Korea, and Japan. Since then, relations between the two countries have gradually warmed up, but China's restriction on South Korea hasn't been lifted. Korean artists and entertainment companies are basically blocked in China. Of course, this doesn't stop Chinese people from loving Korean dramas. Since they can't officially broadcast in mainland China, pirated broadcasts quickly become popular. Many are illegally broadcasted in China with Chinese subtitles the day after they are aired in South Korea. Some of the peripheral products from those shows appear on shopping sites in China like Taobao. Only this time, the massive success of Squid Game in China through pirating has suddenly brought awareness to people in South Korea. They question, we have to pay to watch the Squid Game, why is it free in China? We made Squid Game while China is making money off it. At the National Assembly in South Korea on October 14th, an opposition congressman said, I heard that Korean sportswear in Squid Game was pirated in Chinese shopping APPs, but the government hasn't done anything about it. We should openly discuss the infringement cases in a dignified manner, just like how the U.S. releases the list of countries that infringe on intellectual property rights. A ruling party congressman pointed out that the problem of illegal downloading of Squid Game in China and other places is serious, and that to revitalize the cultural industry, it is necessary to prevent it from being pirated. On October 7th, Vank, a Korean civil society group, posted on Change.org, the world's largest petition site, asking the Chinese government to clamp down on the illegal online distribution of the Netflix original hit show, The Squid Game. A Korean foreign ministry spokesperson also mentioned at a regular press conference on October 7th, regarding the copyright infringement of the Korean drama Squid Game in China, that the Korean Foreign Ministry is working with the Beijing Office of the Copyright Commission and other offices to take measures against online piracy and illegal sales and that they will actively pursue a resolution. Simultaneously with the underground buzz of Squid Game is the buzz of the Chinese movie, The Battle at Lake Changjin. Official Chinese figures show that it has accumulated more than 633 million U.S. dollars at the box office two weeks since its release on September 30th. It can be considered the current number one movie at the global box office. The budget for the battle at Lake Changjin reached 1.4 billion yuan, which is close to the production budget of top U.S. movies. It shows the courage of Chinese filmmakers and the strength of the Chinese film market. We need more of such big budget films to further encourage the audience and ignite the market, so as to promote the sustainable and prosperous development for the Chinese film industry. Take, for example, the My Country, My Parents franchise. It has given us a lot of experience in screenwriting and cinematic storytelling, as well as the interaction with the audience. We still have room for improvement in these aspects. Uh, In the 1950s, the Battle of Chosen Reservoir was an influential and world-renowned battle in the Korean War. The movie made by the CCP tells Chinese audiences that young Chinese soldiers sacrificed their lives to fight against the U.S. Army to ensure future victory against the U.S. Many Chinese audiences have expressed their sentiments after watching the film. They are mainly along the lines of being moved by the sacrifice of the soldiers. Such reactions are great news for the CCP. China's propaganda department has figured out more and more sophisticated methods to get the Chinese public to willingly accept its propaganda. 
including flashy camera work, romantic and poetic representations, patriotism and love of the party wrapped in a humanistic cover, and powerful marketing schemes including requiring party members and government workers to watch and even schools to recommend it to first graders. For Chinese audiences, criticism of the movie will probably get them into trouble. On October 6th, a well-known Chinese media personality who once served as chief reporter for China Business News and editor-in-chief of the in-depth reporting department of Xinjiang News commented on his Weibo. He posted, Half a century later, few Chinese people have reflected on whether the war is righteous, just as soldiers from the Sand Sculpture Company never doubted the wise decision of the top brass. He replaced Ice Sculpture Company, mentioned in the movie with the term Sand Sculpture Company. And the term Sand Sculpture is an online lingo meaning stupidity and brainlessness. He wrote, As for the Korean War, there is no need to over-evaluate it. Just look at North Korea and South Korea now, the answer is all too clear. Two days later, he was arrested under criminal detention by the Communist Party's public security officials for infringing on the honor and reputation of heroes and martyrs, and the case is still under investigation. The Ice Sculpture Company, featured in the movie, has moved many Chinese audiences who don't like to think. The historical fact is that under minus 30 or 40 degrees Celsius on the battlefield of Korea, the Chinese soldiers who were arranged to ambush the U.S. Army and who wore only ordinary winter clothes of northern China would have frozen to death in no time. According to the CCP's own statistics, more than 4,000 Chinese soldiers froze to death and nearly 30,000 were frostbitten during the battle, with few surviving. Chu Haotian then serving as battalion commander in the 27th Army and awarded the rank of general in 1988, was the only one in the battalion who didn't get frostbite. The CCP didn't share with the public how the general survived frostbite. A U.S.-based Chinese art critic said he learned from his father-in-law and other volunteer veterans he interviewed that on the Korean battlefields, soldiers were forced to fight with bulky rifles under the watchful eye of overseers armed with Soviet-style submachine guns behind. He told the Voice of America that his father-in-law served as an interpreter and was received by CCP top leaders Chairman Mao and Zhou Enlai upon returning to China. Stirring up public sentiment against the U.S. is what the CCP needs today. Just as in the 1950s, CCP leader Mao told the Chinese people that the U.S. was invading China and North Korea was their springboard, so China had to support North Korea. In later textbooks and all arts and literature works, the CCP has emphasized this idea. If the U.S. Army occupies North Korea, it will invade China next, so China must send troops to North Korea for the sake of protecting the homeland. But what's true? From 1949 to April 1950, Mao secretly integrated more than 50,000 ethnic Koreans from the Chinese army into North Korea's army. Those soldiers became North Korea's main force. The Korean People's Army soon expanded to more than 90,000, while the South Korean Army was less than half of the size and didn't know about its expansion. The Soviet Union also supplied North Korea with large quantities of weaponry, including heavy weapons. Mao promised Kim Il-sung, the founder of North Korea, that if he fought South Korea, China would support North Korea in case the U.S. sent troops. With outside support, Kim Il-sung had expected to occupy South Korea in two weeks when he suddenly invaded it on June 25, 1950, capturing Seoul and other places three days later. When photos of massacres reached the West showing groups of South Koreans buried with their hands tied behind their backs, the United Nations decided to send troops and 16 countries joined the war. At that time, the CCP still had some hesitation about sending troops to North Korea. They were worried that it would provoke the U.S. Army to invade China and drop atomic bombs on Chinese industrial centers. But Mao obtained a tip through espionage. It was an instruction from U.S. President Truman to General Douglas MacArthur that the U.S. Army shouldn't cross the border between China and North Korea under any conditions and to not use nuclear weapons. Mao decided to send troops as soon as he learned Truman's bottom line. He then launched a slogan to mobilize the Chinese people, resist the U.S. and help North Korea, protect our country. 
On October 19, 1950, 230,000 Chinese Communist troops secretly entered North Korea while announcing to the outside world to be between 50,000 and 60,000 soldiers. It is said that Mao asked a Chinese general which U.S. military unit was the most powerful, and the answer was the 1st Marine Division. Mao ordered to annihilate it so as to shock the world and establish his standing in the international communist movement. He issued a directive to urgently mobilize the 9th Army Group, which had 150,000 soldiers to enter North Korea to besiege and wipe out the U.S. Ace Army. The 1st Marine Division, which had 20 to 30,000 soldiers in the Chosen Reservoir area. Mao thought that the U.S. Army didn't know about the massive size of the Chinese Army and that the U.S. Army was bound to be obliterated. He expected the Army to use quick and secretive actions to win the battle. According to a book published by the CCP and the memoirs of those involved, the Chinese command ordered the troops to march beyond their limits in order to reach the ambush site and complete the encirclement as quickly as possible. It resulted in many soldiers ditching their heavy, clumsy cotton coats and other warm clothing to expedite the march. The Battle of Chosen Reservoir lasted from November 27th to December 13th. The 1st U.S. Marine Division suffered 1,000 casualties and 3,000 frostbite injuries. It was evacuated from the battlefield before Christmas, taking all of its equipment and casualties, picking up two South Korean divisions and nearly 100,000 civilians. American historians called it one of the Marine Corps' greatest battles. As the U.S. military retreated in its entirety, the CCP revised its prepared statement of claiming a victory, changing it from annihilating the U.S. military to driving it away. In 1953, Mao was forced to accept the ceasefire peace talks. The 38th parallel, or the pre-war border, continued to be the driving line between North and South Korea. That is, before the war, the internationally recognized 38th parallel peacefully separated North and South Korea. After the war, peace is restored and the exact 38th parallel is preserved. In this regard, the three-year war the CCP orchestrated and waged only served to destroy millions of lives. The U.S. Army took pride in the Battle of Chosen Reservoir, awarding its soldiers the most number of medals in U.S. military history, 87 at the time. The CCP, on the other hand, pulled the identification numbers of the participating regiments after the battle, and for a long time, the government was reluctant to let people know about the battle. The 9th Army Group, the primary unit that fought at Chosen Reservoir, was originally the main offensive force targeting Taiwan. The CCP's official figure of casualties was nearly 50,000, but some Chinese scholars believe it was at least 90,000. After the Battle of Chosen Reservoir, the CCP stopped mentioning the military invasion of Taiwan for a long time. Part of the international landscape we see today has much to do with the war in Korea and the Battle of Chosen Reservoir. Let's go back to the piracy of Squid Game in China. Will the CCP act on these calls from South Korea to protect intellectual property rights? The odds aren't good because the CCP is well aware of the hang-ups of the current president of South Korea. South Korea's economy is somewhat dependent on China. In 2020, trade between South Korea and China exceeded 300 billion U.S. dollars again, more than the combined trade between South Korea, the U.S., and Japan. In addition, the South Korean president has pinned his hopes of containing North Korea's nuclear weapons on the CCP. Peace on the Korean Peninsula begins always with dialogue and cooperation. I call for speedy resumption of dialogue between the two Koreas and between the United States and North Korea. I hope to see that the Korean Peninsula will prove the power of dialogue and cooperation in fostering peace. Two years ago, in this very place, I declared zero tolerance for war, mutual security guarantee and co-prosperity as the three principles in resolving issues related to the Korean Peninsula. Last year, I proposed a declaration to ending the war on the Korean Peninsula. 
More than anything, an end-of-war declaration will mark a pivotal point of departure in creating a new order of reconciliation and cooperation on the Korean Peninsula. Today, I once again urge the community of nations to mobilize its strengths for the end-of-war declaration on the Korean Peninsula and propose that three parties of the two Koreas and the U.S. or four parties of the two Koreas, the U.S. and China, come together and declare that the war in the Korean Peninsula is over. When the parties involved in the Korean War stand together and proclaim an end to the war, I believe we can make irreversible progress in denuclearization and usher in an era of complete peace. In the Battle of Chosen Reservoir, U.S. forces not only broke through the communist encirclement, but also took nearly 100,000 North Korean civilians with them, including the parents of South Korea's current president. Moon has said publicly, without the Battle of Chosen Reservoir, there would have been no me. However, he hasn't realized that the most threatening issue that endangers South Korea has always been a dual play between China and North Korea, and that the CCP is the perpetrator of both Korean division and the obstruction of Korean reunification. Finally, let's take a look at what entertainment Kim Jong-un of North Korea, the CCP's little brother, is indulging in. Almost all of the younger generation in the family of North Korean rulers have studied abroad. Switzerland is their first choice because of its political neutrality and the hostile relationship between the U.S. and North Korea. In the 1990s, Kim Jong-un, his brother, and his sister all studied in Switzerland when he was in upper elementary to middle school. I wonder if Kim Jong-un occasionally misses the culture he experienced while studying in the West. <laughs> Thank you.